Hello and welcome back to Sydney Summit live streaming. Today we're going to talk, uh, this is DevBytes episode, and today we're going to talk about our Quantum Ledger database. Over the years we've talked to customers about technologies like blockchain, and really we heard two uh, key use cases. So I'm Sean Ray, your host, and joining me today is Shane, my co-host. And we Hello. have Kevin, who is going to talk all through uh, Quantum Ledger Database uh, and its use cases. Um, Welcome to the show, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. So I'm really excited about this talk because Quantum Ledger Databases, you know, QLDB, it's a word we often hear, um, you know, in a lot of talks these days. But to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what QLDB is. So I am really thrilled today, you know, to have Kevin here with us. So I think before we get into QLDB, Kevin, um, you know, I think, tell us a bit about yourself and what you do at AWS. Oh, um, yeah, I'm Kevin Young. I'm working in the, um, AWS Professional Services. Um, so I, our daily job in the professional services is um, working with enterprise customer and deliver projects and help them to innovate. So, yeah, so one of the use cases I'm explaining here today is from their customer. Okay, so quantum ledger database. I often, you know, probably associate that maybe with uh, um, Bitcoin, etc. What is a quantum ledger database? Maybe we should step one back though and talk about blockchain in general, right? I think, because yeah, I think we've got kind of two yeah. different things here. So, you know, when, when I talk to customers over the years about what blockchain was, you know, what is the use case? It's all hype, like why are we building it on the blockchain? Can current technology solve the problem? Um, so, you know, the things that I hear commonly now are probably Ethereum and Hyperledger, uh, and then more like private sort of data stores and stuff. So can you talk through the kind of difference between those two? Yeah, of course. So, um, <coughs> manage, we in AWS, we manage blockchain service. So it's a great, great tool for our customer to do um, application that need um, build up in distributed trust. Um, okay. The data is ma ma main by, maintained by multiple parties, involved by multiple parties. And in the manage, um, QLDB, on the other hand, it's a great tool for our customer to build application that have their own custom, um, the data, they own by themselves. And right. they, they need to contain all the change of your data. And on top of that, they need to be verifiable. Right, so this is very different to, you know, people talk about Ethereum or Bitcoin. So these are on a public ledger, right? Everyone can see the yep. transactions. You know, I recently did a project where we downloaded all 400 million Ethereum transactions and, and went through them to look for interesting things. But what we're talking about here really is my company may be sharing with third parties, but building my own private piece of blockchain. Exactly. Did, did you find anything interesting there, Sean? We actually found one customer. I did this in Singapore a few weeks ago, and uh, within 24 hours of us getting the data, some customer actually transferred $10 million Singapore Ooh. in like 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and he did it sort of a couple of days in a row. So very interesting. What are you saying here? I don't know. All right. Um, All right. But it's just interesting to look through the data and see those kind of uh, those scenarios. So can you really explain then, if you're not going public, if you're not mining the kind of you know uh, these transactions? What's the difference between you know the database and, and one of these managed services? Okay, so um, QLDB it's really a managed database. It's right. a purpose-built journal database. So what it does is when customer need to capture all the change of the data in the application, and for example in your transaction have debits and credits, and you need to record all the change in account, those change logs will be captured in our journal, and right. it's immutable. Okay. Yeah. So my kind of uh, understanding of this type of database is if you think back to like basic accounting, you know, you've got credit, debit, and your ledger. Yep. Yeah. Like we're providing an electronic ledger. Um, and then why would we use this in, in as opposed to another type of database? Yeah, so um, in the traditional application development, application developers spend a lot of time to work on those audit, tr um, audit trial and audit logs okay. um, in to achieve those capability for the application. Those are the custom solutions. Whenever we use those custom solutions, developer need to spend time away from the actual application business logic. Okay. And also those um, custom solution, we consume our database resources, and that's where we come from the operational complexity. So Amazon QLDB, it's built actually to solve, to simplify those problems and help our developer to focus on the application itself. Right. Yep. All right. So, you know, we've got services like, say, DynamoDB, and you can do audit streams, etc. I guess why why not use something like DynamoDB and start auditing, you know, yeah. the transactions that are occurring there? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in AWS, we build 
database fit for purpose. So DynamoDB is really a very um, scalable, um, highly scalable SQL database. Um, and on the other hand, QLDB we build, actually we, we're trying to um, use that for the application need to capture all these audit logs, all the change in the database, and also they need to uh, make that have a verifiable capability as well. So that's why we use the QLDB, build the QLDB service. All right, very cool. So as a developer, should I use you know, a blockchain or a QLDB for a database? Um, yeah, so there are two different use cases in yeah. here. So is there a pattern we, or an yeah, pattern? so in the in the customer need to build application that involved multiple party owning the data, if they need to do build a distributed blockchain, so blockchain service it's a great tool to get started. Okay. And on the other hand, if um, the customer need to build a application um, owning their own data, data and they want to capture all these change for their own data, the QLDB is the way to go. Yeah. Okay. One of the use cases I heard for uh, QLDB, you know, if you go in something like car registration, right, and you know, you sell your mm. car and you hand it over to other people, then yeah. you need some kind of history audit trail that yeah. doesn't change. Or, you know, you might have different third parties who are accessing that data and you really want to make sure that you can go back and see the history. Correct. You know, land titles or something, so you know, people aren't taking over other people's houses. Yeah, yeah that's right. So we have, we have customer use case that have, um, um, have a car registration um, database that capture all the ownership of the data, uh, of the car and the registration. And even when your car ride off, the car ride off, the record's still there, and all the history contained in your database. Okay. Cool. Okay, um, so Amazon QLDB, I believe it's currently in preview at the moment? Yes, correct. So when can customers you know, expect for Amazon QLDB to go generally available? Yeah, so we um, um, in the in the talk today, they are provided a preview link for customer to start um, submitting the preview requests. So okay. once that's in, customer can start. Um, our service team will engage with the customer and help them to get on board and start trying the services. And yeah, good to listen to more feedback on the service. And yeah. All right. So, you know, diving a little bit deeper here, anti SQL, you know, normal SQL RDS compliance is. Amazon QLDB going to be anti-SQL compliant? Yeah, um, today we, the QLDB support the QLDB SQL. QLDB um, SQL? Yeah, so it's very close to our traditional SQL um, 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 cement, uh, syntax. So in the talk, in one of the slides I show you, it's um, very like our traditional SQL selection um, query that we use. So it's very close to what we currently use now. Developer very quickly can pick it up and start using that. Okay. You, you just talked about your talk there. Are you doing a talk? Or you've already done it. What's happening here at Summit with QLDB? Oh, of course. Let's, let's so, yeah, get I on think, can study. I think <laughs> we need to do that. You know, like it's a bit of a, a lot of theory here. Let's try and make this as real as possible. Exactly. So sure. we've uh, got here a uh, demo website. I think, yep. Kevin, I'm going to let you drive here and okay. swap spaces. Yep. So in here, that um, the use case that I show you here, it's, it's a banking system. Um, that we need in the customer. So whenever, when we go into the branch to open a bank account, we need to sign up account authority form. So our signature will be captured in, the, in our banking system. Very often our customer would say, I need to update my account signatures, or I need to add um, an, uh, another person to operate, authorize to operate my account. That's another signature will be captured. So all the, for the compliant purpose, all these change need to be captured in the database mm -hmm. in the traditional way. Developer need to build audit table or audit trial. Very often, that's very resource consuming. But QLDB in here, the demo I show you here, it's purely use a, a serverless application to and use QLDB as a backend and just simple a CRUD, a create updates and delete record operations. So and simple all CRUD kind yep, of exactly. API. And yeah. it looks like you've got a single page app here yeah. hosted on S3. S3. There yeah. you go, very cool. cost effective. Yep, cool. All right, so let me show you it now. It actually looks good too, which is generally yeah. like different to the Better kind of demos like that I build. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more white and black. <laughs> yeah, cool. Awesome. Right, um, as a customer now, I'm going to sign up my account. Say so I'm customer number six. Okay. I want to have a. That's a very image. nice, unique username there. Like you yeah. Did. So um, in Not order to do easy that, to I'm going to do a sign a signature first. So. Say hi. I didn't even know this existed in OSS. Yeah. 
So you mean I've been printing out all these forms and scanning them back <laughs> yeah, for these years right. and I can do this? Yep, so now there you we, go. we can have that um, here. Okay. Uh, right, so That's let's do on it. The desktop? Yeah. Okay, hang on. So it's a live demo. I forgot to attach my um, signature on the on the page. Okay. Come on, demo gods. Demo gods. Here we go. Here we go. All right, let's do okay. it. Let's do that with the signature now. Now we got the signature. Now so signature. Our, you know, we're one hundred percent KYC compliant exactly. now. Exactly. Now, correct. We exist. We've got. We exist. Our name's Kevin, but like we have signature as high, but we. Yeah. I can't like create that. it. Awesome. Now, <laughs> let's have a look. Um, now in the current one, so I'm searching my customer ID again. You should show up my signature right. in the system. There we go. Here we go. In my signature, not used it in the real world, right? So, um, so now next is we're going to update that with a, um, a new image. Um, so, because it's running short, so let's let's do it a quick one. So let's try to remove the record from the database. Oops. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh, bit of a Whilst we're sorting that out, uh, I think... Did uh, you make the appropriate sacrifices to the demo, guys? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So a big, a big shout out to uh, Got Bitcoin for watching in Florida. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. What time is it in the US? Wrong. So what you're trying to show here, I guess, is the audit trail of you can't yeah. really delete a record so in correct. an audible so database. We have, so first one, um, I have the records here that's showing my um, the first history. Okay. And now if I try to update that with a uh, second one. So we might be running a little one bit short, short on time here. Yeah. Kevin? Yay. All right, let's see right. how we go. See you go. So while we close out and do this final signature, so yeah. just to kind of recap on QLDB and Quantum, so this is an auditable ledger database that you would use for, you know, anything where you're dealing with kind of customer information, you want a like strong history, um, you may want to like, you know, share this with third parties because you have the hashing, so you can say, look, we've never modified this data or those types of things. Yeah. Uh, and then you said that there's a way to get onto the preview currently. So how do customers get yeah. involved in that? Yeah, so we have a preview linked in our website. So we show you a QR code later. So you can subscribe to our, pre our preview and provide your account number. So our service team will get great in contact with you again and got onboarded. Okay. All right. Um, awesome, Kevin. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your time today. Now we're going to switch back over to the boys on the blackboard here with uh, This Is My Architecture.